This episode is brought to you by Squarespace. <laughs> All right, so I'm getting over a little sickness right now. So if my voice sounds funny, that's why it does. But with that said, you guys, the perfect point and shoot film camera cannot ever be achieved. Well, the camera that we're gonna be talking about today, in my opinion, is the closest that it's ever come to for me at least. Now, I've owned this camera now for a little under two months, so I can't do a full review. I'm just going to be doing a first impressions today, but from what I have experienced so far with this camera, it is amazing. And I wanna talk a little bit more about why I think it's the almost perfect film camera. And the camera we're gonna be talking about today, you guys, is the iconic Konica Big Mini. Oh, that was bright. Alright gang, so let's get into the Konica Big Mini. So first and foremost, here it is. If you guys have never seen it up close and personal, very handsome little camera. Uh, I personally love the boxy shape that it has, uh, but I wanna give you guys a little tour, talk about some of the features that this camera has, as well as some of the things that I really, really like because the Big Mini is almost the perfect feeling camera just for everyday shooting. But with that said, I do wanna talk a little bit about the flaws and where it comes short and why I don't think it's the you know, most perfect film camera. I don't think there's ever a perfect film camera. So the first thing that I wanna talk about you guys is the lens. Now, the lens actually sits flush in the body itself. So when it's off, it's very flat and sleek, which is great if you have you know, small bags or if you even just wanna throw it in your pocket, this lens is not gonna protrude out of the body whatsoever. It's only when you activate it through the power button here on the top where the lens will actually pop out. Now that is one of the most unique features about this camera. It's what makes the big mini you know, so recognizable out on the street. You see this little boxy kind of lens sticking out, you know that it is a Konica big mini. Now the glass itself, it's a 35 millimeter 3.5 lens. And honestly, when it comes down to it, it's surprisingly sharp. Uh, it's equivalent in my opinion to like the Olympus Mu1, MJU1, uh, maybe a little bit sharper than that, but it's going to perform very, very well, especially if you're doing something. Something like street photography, maybe if you're going on vacation and you wanna bring a nice and small camera that will get the job done, the Big Mini is going to do that very, very well. To keep it simple, the lens on the Big Mini is amazing. And I'm showing you guys sample photos right now from Yosemite. Um, as you guys can see, they are very, very sharp. And honestly, some of the most beautiful pictures I've made with a point and shoot. Next, let's talk about the focal length in the Big Mini. Because this has a 35 millimeter lens, it's going to be very versatile. It's wide angle enough to capture things at like parties, at concerts if you're up close. Um, but 35 millimeter is, you know, very, very standard. If that's something you're into, you're definitely going to like the Big Mini. Now, the camera obviously has autofocus. There's no way to focus this lens other than the camera doing it itself. Um, and it's self-explanatory, just like with any other autofocus camera. You half press, and then inside of the viewfinder, you will get a confirmation with a red or a green dot. And it's crazy, because you can actually hear the lens focusing. Listen closely. It's like a little click. It's very quiet and it's not noticeable. So honestly, I don't even think that's an issue. The viewfinder isn't the greatest. There are frame lines around that help you frame and compose. You also have a built-in flash and uh, the flash is honestly really nice. I like the flash in the Big Mini. On the side here, you have the release to open up the back side to load film. On the back, some Big Minis have this data back. Some of them don't. Um, but this allows you to set your date. It also has the LCD display, the only display on the camera that shows your battery level as well as your shot counter right up here. Then on the side, you have a battery compartment which holds your CR123A, I believe it is. Yeah, CR123A is the battery. 
All right, so now that we gave you guys a little tour of the big mini, I wanna go more in depth and talk a little bit more about some of the features that I feel like makes this camera really, really special. Now, before we get into that, you guys, I wanna give a huge thank you and shout out to our sponsor for this episode, the good folks over at Squarespace. Squarespace is your all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. Now, one of the best moves as a photographer that you can make right now to set yourself apart from the crowd is to create your own dedicated website. Now, Squarespace has all the tools you need for you to be able to get started in minutes. They have award-winning templates. They also give you different pages like the commerce where you can add prints or anything you wanna start selling. And probably the best feature, you guys, the portfolio page where you can show off your work without any distractions. It's just going to be yours all in one place. So if you guys wanna get started, head over to Squarespace com slash King Japes or enter promo code King Japes at checkout to receive 10% off of your first purchase of a domain or a website. Huge thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this episode. Okay, so the first thing that makes this camera special to me is the lens and how sharp it is. The 35 millimeter lens inside of this is surprisingly sharp and I'm gonna show you guys some more images from Yosemite just to show you the rendering of the color. For landscapes, for street photography, for vacations, everyday photography, uh, the lens is going to perform extremely, extremely well. And if you're looking for a camera that has a super sharp 35 millimeter focal length lens, the Big Mini might be a great choice. Now, not only does the Big Mini have a nice and sharp lens, it also has one of the most favorable form factors. There's just something about the boxy form factor of the Big Mini that I go crazy for. I don't know if it's like the old school kind of like Japanese design, um, but having something like this that's smaller than the size of my hand that you can tuck away, um, it's just honestly amazing because you don't have to carry around a large SLR to get quality images. Now, I absolutely love the Olympus stylus cameras, the MJU-1 and the MJU-2, the stylus epic, but the clamshell wasn't always for me. And even though that seems like one of the best features of the camera, I personally prefer the big mini and how the lens kind of just pops out in the front. There's a little, you know, there's, there's a little novelty to having a camera that does that. Now the Big Mini actually has surprisingly decent autofocus. I've never missed a photograph with the Big Mini and it's probably because everything was like in infinity, but I heard that the Big Mini also has an insanely good close focus ability. So I've mentioned this in the past, but the Big Mini was one of my dream cameras for a long time. Uh, and finally getting my hands on one, I can understand why the hype is there for it. And if you're in the market for a premium feeling compact camera, the Big Mini is the camera to go for. But of course, in the title of this video, I said it's almost the perfect camera. Uh, and now I wanna jump over into some of the flaws and talk about where it kind of lacks. And I don't really think it's a design issue with the camera. I think it's more so about the camera actually lasting. There are a couple of things that annoy me about it. The first one being that it's not responsive. Now, when I turn the camera on, Lens pops out, everything is normal. But when I half press to focus, if I'm out and I wanna take a photograph quickly, like if I'm doing street photography, sometimes the camera won't make the photograph. And that's me pressing the shutter button. You kinda of have to baby the camera a little bit, point it, focus it, hold it down for a couple seconds, and then it'll make your photograph. So it's not as responsive as I would like it to be just because you know, if I'm out on the street and I need to make a photo at that instant, it won't be able to do that. You have to baby the camera a little bit. And I think it has to do with the exposure as well as the autofocus getting ready. Uh, it's not really that responsive. The second thing that kind of annoys me, folks, is the battery. Now, the battery is a CR123A, and you know, it's not the most rare battery. You don't have to go to like a special battery store to buy these. Um, you can still find them at like Target, I believe. But these batteries are definitely not the most common. You know, if this camera were to take AA batteries, I think it would honestly be one of the most perfect cameras because AA batteries are everywhere. If you're in a pinch and you need to get a battery from your remote, I know you guys have done that in the past, you can go to your remote and get this camera going. But it does take this battery and you're going to need to go out of your way to buy one if you end up, you know, if the, if the battery ends up dying inside of the camera. Again, it's not a huge deal breaker, but it's definitely something to keep in mind. You might need to keep a spare just in case you have a dead battery. Now, the next flaw in this camera is something that the Big Mini is notorious for, and it has to do with the rear LCD screen. One thing that the Big Mini 
often has a problem with is this LCD screen going bad. And it all has to do with a little band inside of here. There's gonna be a little strip inside of here. I don't know if you guys can see that, but that little strip will sometimes tear and then it'll mess with the communication with the LCD screen. And so oftentimes or not, you might have it bleed or you might see that the numbers aren't showing up properly on the screen. Uh, and that's again, very, very common for big minis to have. Uh, and so mine, mine right now is fine. Like the, the number is there, but it's not 100%. So it can make it difficult for you to tell what frame you're on. Again, it's not a deal breaker and the camera is going to function you know, properly still, but if you really need to know your frame counter at all times, it could be an issue. But good news, you guys, you can actually get that repaired and it'll be back into new. You just gotta replace that little strip. And the last flaw, in my opinion, about the Big Mini has to do with the lens. Now, as much as I love how this lens performs, I think the 3.5 max aperture is where it kind of lacks. So I would love to see the Big Mini with a 2.8 lens. I think with a 2.8 lens, this camera is perfect. With a 2.8 lens, you have one little extra stop of flexibility. When you're shooting this camera in like lower light situations, most times you're gonna need that flash. And with the 2.8, it's just an extra stop of light that you can have to kind of compensate with different looks. Cause not all the time do you wanna have a flash in lower light situations and who doesn't want an extra stop of light. But other than that, you guys, I think the Big Mini is a fantastic camera. And if you guys are in the market for something this sleek, and this iconic, the Big Mini is the way to go. Uh, you know, to compare it to other cameras, I think it's in the same category again as the Yashica T4, the Olympus XA, the Olympus Stylus Epic. Any of those cameras, if you have them or have shot with them before, have a very similar feel to the Big Mini. And uh, yeah, that's all I can really say about it, you guys. So there it is, the Konica Big Mini, the almost perfect 35 millimeter point and shoot film camera. All right, everyone, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you guys want to see more, or if you guys have any comments, questions, or concerns, maybe even suggestions on what I can do with the Big Mini, leave that in the comment section down below. I appreciate you guys taking the time to finish up this episode, and I'll see you guys in the next one. As always, the Nolte Gang. Whew.